All right. Today I'm going to show you what to do when God gives you a miracle. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nays. You can find me on Twitter at AK Naser. Today we got a really cool episode for you. It's basically what happens when you've got a great, great image and uh, everything kind of comes together right at the right moment to produce really beautiful skies and a great foreground, great subject and everything like that. And uh, I'm going to show you how to take something that's already very good straight out of camera and bring it to another level. So we're going to go ahead and do it and uh, we're going to be putting two images together to start off with. So here are the images we've got today. These are basically um, one image where we used uh, lighting and another one where the lighting is out. And I'm gonna explain why we took each of these images as well as uh, the role in all this. But to start off with, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use my move tool and I'm gonna shift click from one image to another one. And that's just going to load this on that image as a new layer. So let's hit F to full screen and I'm just gonna zoom in. So we've got a couple of things uh, that basically were done here. Let's just make this invisible. And you can see this is straight out of the camera and it's gorgeous. It rained earlier in the day. The rain cleared up and produced this beautiful sunset here. These like purples and uh, magentas and blues here in the sky and then the greens in the foreground with our subject. Uh, this happened, this is straight out of the camera by the way. Uh, this bird came and landed right there, right above our model's head during the photo shoot. In the middle of the photo shoot, uh, this bird just decided uh, that it wanted to be in the in the image. So we're gonna leave it in there. And uh, just really, really cool things that, that happened right as we were taking this photo. So one of the great ways in which we were enhancing this is to add another light uh, over here off to the camera left. So I'll explain this, cam this light, why we placed it there, and uh, what you guys can get out of that. So whenever you're shooting someone, and this is backlit, uh, without, without this external light, basically the sun is back behind here, shining light forward and things like that. Um, our subject's face would have been almost completely in darkness. And the reason is because it's, it's backlit from behind. So we don't have a ton of light that's actually like going to be shining on our subject's face. So the only reason why we see this like nice bit of light here um, on our subject is because we added this other light, uh, the strobe, into the scene. So we're seeing that definition on her and on these plants and everything like that because of the light that we added to the scene. Now this is a slightly smaller light than is preferable. Um, the reason we had to use it is that's just what we have, happen to have. If you had a much larger softbox or an octabox, like a giant parabolic reflector, that would have been even better. Uh, but the real key here to make it look and feel a little bit more natural is to keep the directionality of your strobe coming from a similar place to the directionality of your actual ambient light that you want to in, uh, enhance, and that's going to make it look like it's a bit more of a natural look. If this strobe were over here, for instance, it would have competed with the direction of the sun and it would not have made it look anywhere believable that the sun would actually create that light. Not only that, but we're dealing with color temperature here. And in this case, we're gelling our strobe with a CTO gel. That's color temperature orange. It mimics the color of sunrises and sunsets and things like that. So we put a CTO or an orange gel on this light and that's what's creating this light here that's actually um, shining on our subject. So I hope that helped out kind of like figure out where you could put lights in your scene to help increase, um, help increase making them look a little more re realistic, but also getting your subject to stand out from the background as well as how to color it to match the ambient color. So that's what we've got there. Now, if you do photograph someone and uh, you have a light in the actual scene, you don't want to do a ton of work when it comes to like clone stamping and all that stuff. Uh, so all you have to do is keep the camera in about the same place. You can use a tripod for this. Move the person who's holding that light just a little couple, a feet, couple feet away, take another picture, and then you can composite those two together. So we're gonna do that. I've got my two images here. I'm gonna double click on my background. Let's just make that into a regular layer. And I'm gonna shift click on both of these layers. They're not exactly lined up. So I'm gonna go to image, sorry, edit, auto align layers. Auto and hit okay. What this is gonna do is it's help, just gonna help to align those up for me. So now I can just kind of sub one in out for the other one. Okay, very cool. Now all I have to do is put a layer mask on one of these layers. So this layer, uh, the top layer without, our sub, without the uh, light in it, it's gonna get a layer mask on it. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit command I to invert the layer mask. And then I'm gonna paint white on my layer mask just where I want this layer to actually come through. There we go just where we want this layer to come through. Now you're gonna see like a little bit of a difference in exposure and things like that. And the reason is because there actually was a difference in exposure. This makes sense. Um, without that extra light there, uh, it's gonna show a little bit darker. So what we're gonna do, let's just go ahead and mask that in decently well. 
That was really easy, by the way, wasn't it? What I just did, like, oh, put a layer mask on there, and now you have this. No clone stamping, no, nothing difficult required, which is really great. It is a little bit darker, though. So what I want to do is I'm going to create an adjustment layer. We're going to go down to curves, and I'm going to brighten it up. So I'm going to use a clipping mask to so make this curves layer. I only want to affect this layer we just added over top. So to do so, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to just say create clipping mask. And now this curves adjustment layer, I'm going to make it a little bit brighter, but it's only going to affect that one layer. So it's not going to affect the background layer, and this is great when you want to match exposures. So we're going to double click right here, and I'm going to click in the middle and just drag that up just a little bit. There we are. And we can see now how much better that matches. You can see, especially you know, when I zoom in and you look at like the, this area here, there's the before, just looks like it just gets darker there right around the tree. And the after, it just really does blend in quite a bit better. So um, you, you can use those clipping masks and things like that to help blend exposure. It's a really, really nice tip. I'm going to shift click those and hit Command G. So you can see, not too long, and we've got, um, we've got the image together just like we want it. I'm going to use my crop tool, see for the crop tool, and just go ahead and crop in. The reason we've got these extra pixels is because I had to extend the canvas a little bit when we, when we did the auto align layers to make everything kind of line up. There we go. And we're going to hit this check, marks up, check mark up there. And there we have our image. So it's already looking really great. There are a lot of enhancements that we can do to this image, but we're not going to change it drastically because it's already good. Like it came out of the camera, good. I like it already, so why would I do crazy, crazy things to it. I'm not going to. What we're going to do instead is just enhance the color and give it a little bit of styling, and, um, and then it's going to be good to go. In the final version, you might want to like zoom in and, um, and clone stamp out some of these supports that hold up the tree, things like that. Um, you guys know how to do that. If not, um, there are plenty of episodes on clone stamp. Just uh, search, go to the tags above this episode if you're on flurn.com and uh, go down to clone stamp, and you will find the clone stamp episode. So we're not going to do it on this just because we need to save a little time. So the first thing I'd like to do, let's just brighten up our ambient a little bit. Um, the shadows are a little bit too dark for me. So we're going to grab an adjustment layer. I'm going to go to Curves, and we're just going to click right here in the middle. And I'm just going to drag that up just a bit, something like that. And maybe we can just warm this up a little bit. So I'm going to go to my blue channel and just pull that down ever so slightly. And that's going to help to imitate the warm light that's coming from our sun. Um, in this case, warm is going to be yellow, which is the opposite of blue. That's why I dragged the blue channel down. We're going to click and drag the red channel up just a tiny bit. That's going to help add a little bit of red. So we've got like a, a nice warmer orange. Now, I don't want this visible in the highlights necessarily, just in the shadows. So what I can do is go to Image, down to Apply Image. There we go. And I can hit this Invert button. And now this layer is only going to be visible in the shadows. So it's not actually going to make the highlights brighter. It's just making the shadows brighter. So I'll make this visible and invisible. And you can see all of my highlight ranges, especially in this area, those are going to stay the exact same while we increase the uh, level of detail and um, what you can see there in the shadow areas. So it just makes it a little bit, a little bit nicer, a little bit more something you can actually like see and um, just get the detail better there from the shadows. Um, if you didn't do this in Photoshop, you could just use some fill light uh, in the front or change your exposure a little bit to get a little bit more ambient exposure in. It wasn't the perfect balance. We had, were like, you know, kind of on a rush, but you can always make some make up for these things in Photoshop. Okay, that looks really good. Now the next thing we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna just take this and we're gonna give it a little styling. We're gonna make a new layer, grab my brush tool, and I'm gonna grab this color that's here in our sunset. There we go. So brush tool and then hold down Alt or Option to grab your eyedropper tool. So this is what our, our color is now. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna use my gradient tool and then I'm gonna use a radial gradient. So G for the gradient tool. We're gonna choose a radial gradient and I'm gonna choose foreground to transparent. Because I just want this color to kind of like bleed out into everything. We're gonna make like a kind of a lens flare type of effect. So all I'm doing is choosing a radial gradient that goes from foreground, which is the color I just chose, to transparent. So it's gonna like make a big blur of this color. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit. Let's just click right here about where the source of the light is and something like that looks pretty good. Okay, now don't worry about if this doesn't look great just yet. It's not supposed to. We're going to lower our opacity, and now we need it for a layer. We need this to be able to blend into the image. And just like we used in this curves adjustment layer earlier, where we blend it in so it's only visible in the shadows, this time we're only going to make this visible in the highlights. And I just realized that this is pretty complex. And if this is your first time in Photoshop, um, you might want to check out some of our more simple episodes. We will put tags along this episode, things like blend if and apply image, and you can see other episodes where we do the same thing. 
OK. Let's go ahead and make a layer mask here. And I'm going to go now to Image and then to Apply Image. And I want to add this as a light source instead of a, I don't want to bring up the dark, so I want to change the lights. So I'm going to unclick Invert. And there we go. We're going to hit OK. That looks pretty good. It's not there just yet, so what we're going to do is the same thing. I'm going to go to Image, Apply Image, and then we're just going to hit OK there. All right, so that's what we got. If I didn't turn this off and on just now, you might not have even been able to tell that I did that in Photoshop. So let's just turn this off and then back on. It blends in very, very well into the background because what it actually does is it takes a, a snapshot of your image. This is what my layer mask looks like. It takes a snapshot of your image and applies that to the layer mask. So what it does is it helps you to really blend things like this into your image. And it does, it's gonna, just going to do a great job to help color your image, kind of like simplify it and give you this really nice effect that we're seeing there. So that's just, it's just a really nice way to add like a light glow. You see this in the work of uh, commercial photography all the time. And uh, it's just a really cool, cool little tip. OK, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to make a new layer. Let's go to our, I'm going to make a stamp visible by hitting Shift Option Command E. Now we're going to go to Filter. I'm going to go to Render, and then down to Lens Flare. And we're going to put a lens flare just right over here. Lens flares are kind of the most atrocious thing you can do in Photoshop, but I've got a way that they actually look good. So I'm going to show you that way. We're going to put a lens flare right about there. Looks pretty good. Let's bring that down. So we'll go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare, and I'm just going to bring that down in height just a little bit. There we go. Looks good. Now I'm going to fill this whole layer with black. So I'm going to hit Shift Delete. I'm going to fill it with black. I'm going to hit Command F, which just redoes the same filter. In this case, it's the lens flare. And now we're going to change this from normal down to screen. Looking pretty good. So now what I can do is I can give it a nice Gaussian blur if I want to do that. Let's go ahead and do that. I can put a layer mask on there and paint away some of these areas that I don't want to be so visible. And I can change the opacity on it as well. So I've still got my lens flare. You can see it, but you can't really see it until you look for it. And, uh, and that's what you want with an with a effect like this. It's there. It's affecting this image. It's giving it a little bit more, um, just a little bit more of like a nice artistic feel. But you can't see that it's there until you look for it, um, which is really cool. OK, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to just change a little bit of the color work on this guy and, um, to do so. So that's a pretty big change, what we did already. Uh, to do so with the color work, we're going to grab a curves adjustment layer. And uh, we're just going to start playing around here. So I'm going to grab my red channel. And uh, we're going to pull up just a little bit here in our red channel. I want to see if I can put like a nice uh, magenta there into our shadows. There we go. And then our green channel, let's just pull up a little bit on our greens. Pull down the blues in the highlights just a little bit. And maybe I'll pull up in the reds a little bit. All right. So this is your chance to like get in here and kind of play around. There's no right or wrong whenever you're doing this sort of thing. It's all about the feel and you know, how, how you think this image should come together. Um, that's what it's all about. And this is just one variation. Many variations will probably look good. Below that, I'm just going to create a couple of curves adjustment layers. We're going to make this guy a little bit darker. Okay? And I'm going to use my gradient tool now with the linear gradient. And I'm just going to pull in a little bit of white here. There we go. And this is just going to help us get like a little bit of vignetting going on. Not much, but just a little bit. So kind of give us that on the outside. We'll make another curve adjustment layer, bring that up in brightness a little bit. And this is going to do the exact opposite. So we're going to make this area a little bit brighter. All right, even where our subject is. So we can see that's just kind of like helping that area get a little bit brighter. I'm going to give it a little more of a blur so it looks just a bit more on the natural side. OK, so there we can see just it's a little bit flat at this point, and adding those two layers just gives us a little bit more of an idea of maybe what we should be looking at in this image. So let's shift click those three layers, hit Command G, and we can see the difference that that made. So we're doing quite a bit in not a lot of time. We started off with this, we added our other layer, brightening things up as well as working on our color and working on our color and our focus a little bit more. We're almost done actually. The other thing we're going to do, I'm going to grab a hue saturation adjustment layer, I'm going to crank up the saturation something like right about there. And then I'm going to hit Command I. And we're just going to go in here with a big soft round brush. And I'm just going to paint in a little bit more saturation coming from our sun area. There we go. So a lot of this image is on the desaturated side, um, except for where this nice highlight is here with the sun. 
There we go. That looks pretty good. And I might bring down the saturation. I'm going to do that underneath this curves adjustment layer while where I change some colors. So I'm going to bring down the saturation. Um, let's go hue saturation just a little bit. And then I'm going to hit command I and I'm going to make this visible, you know, around this area. So this is like what I would call something similar to like a saturation vignette, which I don't think that many people use this sort of thing, but it, it can be just as effective as a, uh, as a luminosity vignette. So there with the saturation lower on the outside and then a little bit higher there on the inside. And that looks pretty good. If you wanted to finish it off, um, this is the levels adjustment layer. Maybe I'll just put a little bit more blues in the shadows. And there we go. And this is where I would really recommend taking your time and kind of playing around to understand um, what you actually want the, the look and the feel of this image to be because a slight shift in color will totally change the, uh, change the feel of the image. And so it's, it's not something that I would take lightly, in other words. Like when you're doing these color shifts, um, if you t push something towards the blue side, it's going to make something look like a little bit sad, more cold. Towards the yellow or the orange side, it's going to give it life and vibrance. Towards the green side, it can go towards the eerie side. Like think about the matrix, how it's colored green. That's on purpose. If everything were colored like bright and orange and rosy and fun, it would have looked like happy, fun image rather than, you know, like kind of mysterious. So um, be very conscious with your color choices and kind of just take a second to try to understand what different colors mean and uh, how they're normally associated in like with emotion, you know, like, oh, I'm feeling blue, I'm feeling sad, um, or like things are radiant, I'm happy, it's bright. Uh, those, are, those are important things, so um, keep them in mind. We're not just picking and grabbing colors here at Total Random. They actually should uh, mean something and invoke something in your viewer. And that's it, guys. This image was really great straight out of camera. We didn't have to do a ton to it. Um, <laughs> This is what I call not doing a ton to this image. This might be what you call doing a lot to an image. Uh, but I think we got a great image and it really didn't take that long. So let's just zoom in here and uh, we can see here's the before image. And uh, that's straight out of camera, still not bad. But the after, I think we can all agree, is just a little bit better and uh, it really didn't take too long to do. So next time you're out there, find a beautiful light source, enhance it a little bit with a, uh, with a strobe if you need to. Make sure to take a picture with that person not in the frame or the strobe not in the frame so you can composite those two together. Just bring a little bit of color and enhancement in there and you're going to make something awesome, just like this. And uh, you can do it. I have faith in you. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I hope you had fun with this. I hope you have an amazing life. I'll flirt you later. I grant to you an amazing life. For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.